Hi, welcome to online tutorial videos from JCB Auto Labs. For more information and to download the model of this video, you can visit us at www.jcbarolabs.org. So, in this video, we are going to talk about how to generate uh, sinusoidal or how to create uh, a sine wave inverter with the help of high bridge inverter structure. Okay, so stay with us till the end of this video. You will learn a uh, lot more stuff about the simulation part. Okay, further we also provide online training, helping technical assignments. We also do freelance projects based on data science, Python, machine learning, embedded system, etc. So if you have any such requirement, then you can let us know by contacting us through our website, which is www.jcbrolabs.org, or you can also mail us at info at jcbrolabs.org. Okay, so let's talk about uh, in our last video we talked about a half bridge structure. All right, so in a case of a half bridge in structure, uh, the output waveform was like this. Let's say it is a half bridge. So we apply this one, and at the output or at the load the waveform was simple like this ok so it is also uh, inverter because it is converting DC voltage into plus VDC and minus VDC right and we applied here a square wave to the control now uh, in order to generate a sine wave inverter so what we have we have here half bridge right uh, half bridge wave inverter uh, that will remain same and then here we will apply a PWM signal and it specifically is sinusoidal pulse rate modulation so the PWM signal generated with the sinusoidal as a, as a message signal and then at the output at this side we will get a PWM wave output right like this PWM signal output will get here then after that uh, we apply a filter ok so our filter is applied because uh, sine wave is embedded into this formulation uh, into this wave and then at the output of this filter or across the load we got a sine wave back right so when we talk about this filter design so uh, this filter because uh, let's say if we have a 50 hertz uh, SPWM wave and at the output we want a 50 hertz signal so obviously the filter characteristics should be such that uh, uh, 50 hertz lies well within the pass band of the filter right and the cutoff frequency should be way higher than that of the uh, required frequency right so you can find the value of L and C by FC by 2 pi root else so this formula uh, remains holds good here as well so when we talk about filters so there are several kind of filters structures are available uh, so in our model we will be using a lc filter structure of this kind right l and c so we'll be using lc as 1 milli henry and capacitance as 1 milli farad as well okay so these two lc values uh, we will be using I, I, in our design ok so that will be our filter structure so finally this will be the structure we we are going to simulate so when we talk about a uh, filter diagram or filter schematic so obviously there are two switches here so these switches could be uh, either BJT or MOSFET or IGBT uh, it could be like uh, depending on the application and then we will have this uh, uh, VDC which we want to uh, uh, convert into an AC signal right and then the filter will be connected here from this one right and the second portion will be connected here as well ok and then uh, and there will be a load RL and now these uh, pulse SPWM wave will be provided so uh, one it will go directly and on another transistor the 
<coughs> not part of it will go ok so here the aspect of lumen will be applied to the base of this transistor so working of uh, this half bridge is same as we have discussed in our previous video so now, now as a next step we will create this particular model in simulink and let's start it ok so ok so let's create a new model So a blank model we have created. Okay, first task we'll do we'll save this model on the desktop and let's say yeah uh, inverter half bridge SPW. Okay, so first of all we'll generate SPWM wave. So in order to generate the SPWM wave we need first of all a sine wave because this has to be simulated uh, and then we need a repeating sequence in order to generate a triangular wave right ok and then uh, we will be uh, using this logical operator ok so a greater than and equal to will be using greater than or equal to right and then let's apply a uh, scope mm, ok here we will get in sync ok apply a scope there ok so what we will do we will create a two structure of it and then layout will be one by one apply and then ok ok and we will be using a mux as well well the most of it has been dis already discussed in our previous video how to generate SPWM wave so you can refer to that as well ok now generated ok now <coughs> in order to generate a better signal ok first of all the frequency of this uh, triangular wave um, uh, or this sawtooth wave must be way higher than that of this uh, frequency so first of all let's change the frequency of this sine wave so it because we want to generate 50 hertz at the output so frequency of this sine wave will be 2 pi f 50 and the sample time will be 1 by 10,000 so that we can generate a better quality of sine wave and simulink similarly in this uh, the value will be because the it is the amplitude value so we want modulation index to be less than one uh, or amplitude modulation index so it will be we will take it minus 1.1 to 1.1 and then apply ok and the time period so if we want to generate a 1 kilohertz sort of wave so it should be 0 0.001 so I think uh, yeah it is a 0 0.001 these will make a uh, 1 millisecond so make it a little higher as well apply and then ok, okay. we will generate it for 0 0.1 second only and then save it and now let's run it so ok where it is it is not being generated at all ok let's see whether we have done it correctly yep so let's change this uh, solver configuration block so instead of variable step we will have this fixed step was this kind of problem occur when we use a variable step because in variable step configuration uh, this uh, the sampling period decided uh, automatically by the simulink ok so we will have a higher sample rate for it ok so let's try to generate it again yeah now it's fine and here is a very fine PWM because the frequency is very high right so we'll see how it affect our design so if you try to expand it you will get ok so this is a PWM wave and this is a sawtooth wave ok so if you are designing it uh, just keep in mind like how to <coughs> this uh, amplitude of this sawtooth wave must be greater than that of the sine wave ok now we will design our inverter so 
so in order to design the inverter first thing we'll need a power source or a voltage source so here we have this voltage source so we'll be needing two of them right so let's zoom it up yeah okay so we have already uh, designed our SPWM there here we will design it so the value we have chosen 100 volt that it as it is now we need two switches so here we will be using a MOSFET so you can any other one as well so here MOSFET is here yep. okay here so let's rotate it okay here we'll apply a gate pulse and here is the source so it will connect it to here and we need one more of it okay. right and then the same part will go here that's fine and now this gate pulse will connect it to the PWM and the second pulse will connect to the after knot so we'll select a node from here logic and bit operation and uh, let's select a node operator here here it is so we'll take the node of uh, this PWM signal and then we'll apply it here okay that's fine let's save it now we'll need a power GUI so let's connect it as well Let's make it as it is. Now we need a uh, load. So let's first of all create this RLC branch. Okay. So RLC. So here RLC branch and we select our individual load uh, that is R and let's make it 100 ohm only and then apply. Okay. So let's rotate it. Yeah. Okay. So let's connect it here, and another point will go the middle of these two batteries. Okay. Now let's see the output. So for output, we need a voltage measure. Okay. So we'll connect a voltage measure here one point and the second point and then we need a, a scope again okay so now let's run it uh, yeah let's run so at the output as usual this speed of limb wave is generated so let's change this train period to something one kilohertz only because our sampling frequency is too high okay so let's run it again okay so here we are getting our wave so here's a pwm wave and sinusoidal is uh, signal is information is incorporated in it that means that is embedded in this pwm wave so now if we apply uh, a loop uh, filter circuit in between as we discussed the theory at the output we should get a sinusoidal wave right okay so let's connect a filter so we need two more component and we need a L 1 milli Henry and we need a C so we'll make it to minus 3 and then okay okay that's looks fine and let's connect them so this inductor will go here so one point of inductor is connected to this point and another point will be connected here and here is the capacitor so uh, um, as far as this value of this L is concerned then you can find several papers uh, the value of L can be obtained from here as well and sometimes like based on the <coughs> ripple current specification of the design we can also choose the value of uh, uh, inductor so there are several research paper we describe this particular problem so you can refer to those papers as well now let's try to run it and finger crossed hopefully everything goes fine 
okay so let's see okay here is our sine wave so it looks like fine but there are some points here like uh, and if we think about the starting it is going beyond 100 and then within the 100 so let's try to simulate the signal within uh, for some longer duration let's say 0 0.5 second and if we run it okay it will take time So here is our sine wave. So let's make the style as uh, two point. Okay. So a perfect sine wave has been generated uh, within minus hundred to hundred. Okay. So we can also let's make it to zero point two only. Let's run it. Okay, so this is the final sine wave uh, inverter at the output and if at the same time if we try to find the value uh, which is occurring at this point so we can connect this voltage sensor here as well right so and here again okay fine okay instead of this uh, we can try to make both in the same figure as we did here so let's make it like this okay so instead of that we'll have this two configuration and then layout and then apply and then okay okay and the first point will is connected to the PWM output and the second point is to this one okay and now let's run it So this is the sine wave uh, at the starting point right because as we have connected the inductor so it has a slight effect on the ripples uh, so it is prior to the filter and it is this is the sine wave after the filter so it is very much clear like uh, our sine wave is being ex uh, generated at the output of this inverter so try to change the frequency of this uh, uh, PWM signal so right now we were using a 1 kilohertz signal so let's make it about it will be 10 kilohertz okay and let's try to run it again yeah sine wave looks more better now. okay so as a uh, as we increase the sampling frequency our uh, starting portion are a little distorted but after that it is a perfect sine wave uh, with a 50 hertz sinusoidal signal frequency. So that's and that's how we can generate this sine wave, or we can design this sine wave inverter uh, with the help of this SPWM, uh, SPWM, and half bridge structure. Okay. So I hope you understand uh, how to design this sine wave inverter and how to choose these um, uh, filters and uh, I think <coughs> uh, if you have any doubt or any suggestion then you can let us know by commenting below this video. Finally we also provide online training, help in technical assignments, we also do freelance projects based on data science, python, machine learning, embedded system etc. So if you have any requirement then you can contact us through our website which is www.jcbrolabs.org or you can also mail us at info at So that's it for this video. Thank you.